so that one who belongs to God may be competent, equipped for every good work. I charge you in the presence of God and of Christ Jesus, who will judge the living and the dead, and by his appearing and his kingly power, proclaim the word. Be persistent whether it is convenient or inconvenient. Convince, reprimand, encourage through all patience and teaching. The word of the Lord. That question is saying, 
the very reason that the reason these pews are empty could be because the way we behave in this marriage actually makes people less likely to have faith in God. They come, the way we treat them, and they throw up their hands in the air and say, well, I'm treated the same way in the streets, I'm treated the same way in my organization, I'm treated the same way in school, so why do I have to come here in a church where I'm expecting love, justice, care, and I receive the same things I'm receiving out there? What difference does it make? And they throw the answer and go out. That's exactly what Jesus is putting in the last sentence. But let before we come, as we come to last sentence, with that awareness, let's start with what our reading is in common. First, we have our first reading where Israel is marching towards the promised land. And as a people of God, as the Israel of today, we are reminded that victory is a combination of power of God, God intervenes for his people, but also the people are what have to put efforts. That we can't pray and sit back and expect God somehow will win everything for us. No. It's a combination of both prayer and efforts. So Israelites have to put effort. Even the effort of helping Moses to keep up his hands in prayer, they have to help him hold up their hands, otherwise they lose. So our Christian faith, our Christian prayer must have those two elements. Otherwise, otherwise that prayer is incomplete. Yes, pray, but also heart. Act upon the prayer we pray. Just pray is not enough. It's good, but not good enough. Acting on the prayer is a Christian way of life, is the life of the people of God. And when we then pray, we are seeking the power for, of God so that we, in our actions we may have an energy, we may have a support. And this prayer has to be continuous. That is why a prayer is not just a formal thing we do in church. It's continuous. We go to church and pray in action outside. So that people can tell the difference between me who go to church and anyone else out there. They can see me acting my prayer. They can see me acting the Mass I celebrate. They can see me, they can experience me acting the Eucharist I celebrate here. Otherwise, when Jesus comes back, do you find any faith or not? If prayer is limited to what we do here and outside there, we treat each other like pagans. It makes no sense. It's what Jesus wants us to challenge us. So, what are the elements involved in this reading? So we must not lose hope in prayer. We must lose, not lose heart. Pray, put that prayer into action. But Jesus brings an interesting relationship so that we can understand the powerless. That a feeling of powerlessness must help us to persist in prayer. But he also brings the powerlessness, the powerlessness that the powerless have also right. And they have to persist for that right. And if they can persist and get that right or not, what about a God who is not biased like a giant? He will provide that power and will bring them to achieve the fullness of what they are. And there are quite a lot of situations in which people judge exactly as we have this judge. This judge is looking down on the woman because she is poor. He thinks, well, I can trample the right of this woman to take me nowhere. What are you going to do? So what? What are you going to do, woman? Do we do that? Let's look at our society. Who are some of the people whose rights are trampled upon? Please, I want you to talk. Women, isn't it? The poor, homeless, people with a drug addiction, criminals. What about our migrants? People come here, either they are legal or illegal. We can put them into work. They won't even get paid, or they won't even get a good food. We won't even support them because we think they are too poor to get something good for themselves. We have created a mind in our, in our minds 
this guy comes from a very poor situation, Rio reminded poverty. You can treat him or her the way we like. Who cares? The attitude of this church. That is what Jesus is telling us. Well, if we behave like that as Christians, how do we expect people to have faith in the church? How do we have people to, to, to have faith in God? But let us see what Jesus is telling us. So friends, let's look at where we work, who we relate with, how we treat other people for whatever reason that is in our head. Ryu or Imanja. That could be the reason why people have no trust in our parish, have no trust in our church, have no trust in the religion. Because our behavior tells it that we oppress the powerless. We oppress the poor. We misuse them. There is a new measure that has come out and is measuring modern slavery. Who oh, and who and find out and it's wonderful. It's reading a lot and lot. It's time for humanity to come to realize how much people, how many people are enslaved in slavery today. And they combine a number of things in, the, in, the, in that measure. But Christ is reminding us as believers that our life is going to face suffering and persecution. We are going to experience that. We are going to experience people like this child. People in possession, people in power, people who make decisions, and they will make decisions against those they think are powerless or those who are actually powerless. They will oppress them. They will not listen to them. We don't care about your right. We don't care whether you read. We don't care whether you, you, you get your right of judgment because you are oppressed. Jesus is warning us as believers that the world will treat us like that as Christians. You will move from here today and tomorrow you will go somewhere else to wait in the gospel. People will treat you like that. Jesus is telling us that. Telling that. That to be aware is part that we will, we will experience that. And so he invites us to persistence in prayer so that there is intervention of God. So that the persistence in prayer and the reliance on the help of God can actually overcome the immoral behavior of such people like this judge. Or a behavior that is indifferent to morality, is indifferent to the justice of others. That indifference, that immoral attitude, can be overcome by prayer and reliance <laughs> on God. <laughs> it provides us with confidence and persistence. Prayer provides us with the faith, and the faith provides us with the reliance and the strength from God. So friends, we have three different types of prayer, attitude in prayer. One is inciting ourselves to faith. Let's say people enter through that door and they have guns and they hold us at ransom. And we are Christians, we are going to pray. We can do three things. We can recite to the faith and say, okay, let's let God see what happens. The second attitude is that we can pray and then wait for a miracle. And the third attitude is that we can pray, but still keep looking around how we can escape. So this is what Jesus is telling us. Our prayer must combine prayer and action. He is challenging us to build that possibility. Prayer must be a spark for action. That when we find a situation in which we have been judged, who mistreats a woman, it's time to act. And tell this judge, well, we don't behave like this. If you find people in your own parish, in your own context, who pray, but don't act, it's time to ask, let's act, let's do some action. If you find people in the streets at your place who mistreat people for whatever reason, real or imagined, and they are Christians, it's time to tell them, you know what? You are bad the example. Paints the faith of Christ badly. It makes people less likely to believe in God. This is what Jesus 
is challenging us. That our prayer must be acted upon. While we shall experience suffering, we shall experience persecution in all forms, our prayer combined with action and not be afraid. Act. Sometimes, I want to give this example from a personal experience. There are times that I felt like I should never come to the U.S. because of such mistreatment. But after sitting and realizing that Jesus has not called me to sit in comfort, I thought it's time to do what Jesus asked of me. To be where he asked me to be, pray and act and point to things that gives the band an example about the church, both in my life and in the life of other people. It's time to pray, but it's also time to point to things that paint faith in the wrong way, paint church in the wrong way. Sitting and uh, uh, expecting that things will just happen is like praying and expecting miracles. Well, miracles will take a long time to come. But you can bring miracles now if we pray and act and act according to the will of God. Doesn't matter how people treat you, doesn't matter the suffering you get, doesn't matter how people belittle you, is acting to bring the right thing. That is the call Jesus has put on us.